Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. We are in the fifth uh, week lecture series. Uh, this is in sequence 27th lecture. We will be um, learning on shear stresses. Uh, shear stresses we need to learn and many times shear stress governs the failure failure theories uh, we won't discuss in this scope uh, it is discussed to some extent in a small way probably in mechanics course in the previous courses or it may be discussed with respect with respect to the subjects uh, whatever is uh, generally considered for for specific requirement that way so, with that note, uh, we, we move forward to the recapitulation slide. Uh, we have done uh, a brief history of aircraft as well as uh, solid mechanics or structural analysis related to aerospace engineering. We have learned various types of external loads and uh, how do they act, where do they act, why how those are different in landing condition or also in, in while it is flying and uh, how the load factor plays a big role and how the flight envelope is also important why we do, do need to keep a monitoring eye on the flight envelope. And after that we have learned that uh, the whole fuselage and wing bending moment shear force diagram with a typical condition of loading we have learned uh, to find out we have got we are introduced with the unit load analysis and then uh, we have gone to the a specific type of tra uh, uh, structure uh, truss is coming so that is three dimensional trusses which is important in aerospace vehicles so, that we have learned with some example of uh, landing gear systems and then uh, in this uh, week we got introduced to the theory of elasticity. Theory of elasticity you are introduced already with, in your, uh, with the course of mechanics. You are already introduced with what is stress, what is strain, different forms of stress and strain transformations equilibrium, but uh, we need to learn for advanced studies for development of advanced uh, programs or analysis. We need to learn what people have already done and how they have approached those problem initially and uh, recent days uh, numerical things are not at all discussed here. Those are discussed in the respective courses along in, in, in advance to these topics what we are discussing now. So, in that uh, encompassing the uh, definition of stress, uh, equilibrium equations, uh, principal stresses already we have covered. We have also covered the transformation of stresses and uh, one important thing is introduced to you that is the stress, stress transformation or uh, notation of stress system in terms of tensorial or index notation uh, with uh, that uh, that sequel we will come to the shear stress. This lecture will, will consist of shear stress. Let us see how do we find out shear stress and uh, how do they represent in specific cases uh, famous cases also we will be la learning, learning with example. So, 
shearing stress what I we see is uh, to consider that we are considering any surface uh, as it is given on the right hand side figure this figure where what we have is that that plane uh, that surface is denoted by the normal n and this normal n vector is denoted as represented above uh, with uh, direction cosines n 1, n 2 and n 3 unit direction cosines. So, uh, with this we we see that uh, we also hold one more important equation uh, that is the traction or external loads what is acting on that that may be divided in components T 1, T 2, T 3 and uh, the magnitude of the resultant uh, shearing stress on a section having the normal n i is uh, given by this this n is sometimes given as n i also in index notation in 1 2 3 that is the reason it is stated that way. So, if uh, the normal stress acting on that particular plane is sigma n and the shear stress acting on that particular plane is tau and then easily we can say that it is uh, that tau square is equals to T i square plus sigma n square. So, uh, that in a vectorial way we can amplitude vectorial amplitude we can easily find out and then uh, let the principal axis be chosen as the coordinate axis uh, in this this is we are considering a special case this is a general type of case and the sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 be the principal stresses. Uh, so, it, it becomes easy to understand because already we are uh, introduced to sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3. So, uh, because we are introduced to the coordinate transformation or transformation of traces, stresses also along with that. So, anything even if it is sigma i j acting on the system or experienced by the system that can easily be transferred to sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3. And accordingly we can uh, if we choose uh, accordingly we can write that this is sigma i j as it is mentioned here this is in general, but uh, if it is in 1 2 3 form we can write that T 1 is equals to sigma 1 n 1 sigma T 2 equals to sigma 2 n 2 and T 3 is equals to sigma 3 n 3. Now, uh, what we can see is that the square of this is nothing but the square of this because those are orthogonal in direction. So, that gives us this this value. Now, if we come to the previous equation what is uh, written this is already in a vector way we can easily say if this is t. So, we can write that uh, this may be the sigma n n and this may be the tau n t. So, we can easily uh, vector uh, definitely here the vector is not completely represented with, with the length it is only the direction is represented here. So, following that what we can say that the sigma n n can have be also found out with uh, multiplication of the unit direction cosines and that component if we take all that in components will give us the normal direction sigma n n. So, we get the sigma n n is equals to this. Now, if we substitute back to this equation what we have is that tau square is equals to this minus this this one square and a few steps are jumped uh, we have jumped here yeah, I would suggest you do yourself and uh, try to find out that tau square is equals to n 1 square plus n 2 square multiplied by sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus n 2 square n 3 square multiplied by sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square n 3 square n 1 square multiplied by sigma 3 sigma 1 whole square. 
So, this is uh, a good expression for the shear stress acting on a surface while the surface force, surface boundary force are denoted by T and uh, the normal stress on that particular plane is given by sigma n n. So, we move forward. To discuss uh, the situation, discuss the uh, shear stress conditions, uh, we will consider typical examples. It is not a very general usual example, uh, but it is it is having some significant uh, representation. So, let us see. First example we are considering that n 1 and n 2 is equals to 1 by root 2 that is uh, it is 45 degree in angle with, with the sigma 1 and sigma 2 axis whatever we have chosen from the general stress system sigma i j we have found out sigma 1, sigma 2 and those corresponding directions and we are considering that uh, the sig n 3 is equals to 0. So, if it is uh, like that, uh, we may imagine a cuboid where uh, the n 3 is uh, matching or the third direction is matching with the sigma 3, whereas uh, n 1 and n 2, the other two directions of the cuboid, plane, plane of the cuboid is at 45 degree angle with respect to their 1 and 2 axis. Now, if we substitute this value in the shear stress equation, what we have uh, derived in the previous uh, slide, uh, if you, what we get is that the tau in that particular plane is equals to half of sigma 1 minus sigma 2. So, this uh, we can easily visualize that is why the plane of maximum stresses is given here. This is one of the maximum stresses, what we find in that this particular case. So, uh, similar to the previous example, if we, if we consider this is a change to n 1 and n 3 just, just to visualize it properly. Otherwise, it is a similar case whether uh, the axis system is rotated 90 degree with respect to any one axis hardly matters to the stress system. So, uh, just for visualization, we have changed the axis system n 1 and n 3 we have considered 1 by root 2 that is 45 degree and n 2 is collinear or in the same direction to the uh, sigma 2. And uh, sometimes it is it is uh, easy to imagine with respect to x y z that is the reason this x y z is also given and considered that 1 and is corresponding to x, 3 corresponding to z and the 2 is corresponding to y, the plane where t is acting along the sigma n and sigma n t along with sigma n n and sigma n t. So, uh, what we have similar way sigma 1 minus sigma 3 we are getting for the case where, where sigma 1 is greater than these are not cut please consider that uh, it, it is a typographical error sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2, sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3 the maximum shear stress we get is sigma 2 and the sorry tau 2 and the associated normal stress is sigma n n is given by putting the values in this equation we can find out that sigma n n equals to half of sigma 1 plus sigma 3. So, we have in those particular planes plane we have uh, I have said this it is difficult to imagine we will come to the next slide and see, but what is the stress condition in that particular uh, plane. In that particular plane the stress condition is this is the truss, uh, shear stress and this is the normal stress. So, we have two planes two orthogonal planes n 1 and n 3 such that where this same amplitude of stresses are acting and n, n 2 we are on that plane we are not sure what is acting there. So, if we move forward, mm -hmm, sorry. Here we see the representation of that particular problem what we have discussed in the previous one. 
Here uh, what we see is that 1 and 3 that is the reason for the drawing sake and for understanding with the type of coordinate system. So far we have followed, we have followed this. As we have said uh, that 2 is uh, along the same direction whereas, 1 and 3 those planes are making 45 degree angle. So, this plane and this plane I should say that this plane this plane is making 45 degree angle with sigma 1 as well as sigma 3 and additionally if we look at this plane is also making 45 degree with the sigma 3 and negative of sigma 1. So, that is what is uh, said these, these are the planes we are talking about. This means that the planes two of them on which the shear stress takes on takes on an extreme value makes angle of 45 degree or 135 degree with the sigma 1 and sigma 3. So, corresponding we have two more that is the reason two both the angles are mentioned. So, accordingly we find the cases. We have one more uh, typical case where we assume that sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2 and they are greater than sigma 3. So, let us see try to check what happens. So, the tau max becomes T 1 following the similar way putting the substituting the values as we have done earlier and sigma n n is equals to half of sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Corresponding orientation of the plane is n 1 equals to n 2 and uh, since uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 are same and it is undefined. It is undefined because uh, those are same and it is uh, mathematically speaking we cannot uh, find out the orientation as it is here we can find out the orient orientation, but there we cannot find out the orientation. And n 3 which is uh, uh, equals to plus minus 1 by root 2 uh, may have some orientation. So, it is uh, something we can say that uh, this cuboid only, but it is rotating with respect to this axis. So, it may have uh, different position because the other two are undefined. That is the reason keeping in this axis sigma 3 uh, oriented in this direction or in this direction it may have uh, any any angle on the other side. So, that is the reason it says undefined. Uh, so, in terms of x and y and z it has been said again. Actually, the planes corresponding to n x and n y are indeterminate. This means that the plane on which tau 1 is acting makes an angle 45 degree uh, or 135 degree with sigma 3 axis, but remains indeterminate with respect to sigma 1 and sigma 2. That is the reason I said it, it may be something any position and it is big difficult to determine or indeterminate. So, we move forward uh, to our next topic, next topic shear stress is to some extent intro introduced. If you are interested more about this, we can easily have a look. This topic is uh, to some extent also related to shear stresses. So, uh, it is a nice visualization like the stress ellipsoid lame is uh, stress ellipsoid we have seen uh, in the last class or the last lecture. So, here uh, we, what we see, let us see. Let the frame of uh, reference be again chosen along sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 axis. We are choosing those as the axis uh, and a plane that is equally inclined to that to these three axis is called an octahedral plane. This is uh, also used uh, in some book for equilibrium equations for surface. This plane looks like
this plane. <coughs> so, if you if we look at the description what is said that a plane that is equally inclined to these three axes is called an octahedral plane. We are talking about this plane because this is uh, equally inclined to all the three axes. I have not given uh, any axis number, it can be easily given following the system what we are doing. This is x, this is y and this is z. So, following this uh, we can say that this is the octahedral plane and uh, such a plane will have n x n y n z uh, equal uh, definitely it has to be equal because it is inclined to same way in, in the to the axis and definitely to for a Cartesian system that this has to follow an octahedral plane will be defined as plus minus 1 by root 3. There are 8 such planes, now it becomes difficult to imagine. Why 8 such planes? Let us uh, try to observe. Say this is the plane which is x z and we also have one more plane better to change the color. Okay. One more plane is bisecting it perpendicular way and that plane we can say that this is z y plane. Now, we can imagine one more plane in the Cartesian coordinate system which is something like this. Now, with this notation, with this drawing, we can easily imagine that, we can easily imagine that and, and this may be, this is then what which plane? This is uh, then uh, x y plane. So, uh, which quadrant we have drawn here? This quadrant, this quadrant is this quadrant we have drawn, we have talked about this octahedral plane, yellow is not visible at all, anyway it is there. Uh, so, similar to that we can have, so there are 8 quadrants in 3 dimension and we can find out that is the reason here it is said that there are 8 such planes. So, this is in one quadrant and similar way we can have 8 quadrants because that is created by 3 mutually perpendicular planes and uh, that may have 3 quadrants. So, uh, let us go to the to the visualization or octahedral stress what we are, we are discussing. The normal and shear stresses on these planes are called the octahedral normal stress and octahedral shear stress respectively. 
Now, from the previous equations what we have already derived the sigma we can easily find out putting putting those values for the sigma n n and sigma n or sigma n n that becomes sigma 1, 1 third of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and that is what is written here as I 1 that is the stress first stress invariant. This first stress invariant is also introduced in the last week and it is said why it is said invariant because irrespective of coordinate system it remains uh, same. So, whatever way the it is stressed whatever value the stress system it means external load if remains same then in any condition the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 also remains same and the, the sum of those 3 uh, is also a constant known as the first stress invariant or I 1 sometimes this is also given as A 1 in some books. So, but both are same. Okay. So, uh, the octahedral stresses uh, we have this is uh, what we have and uh, the tau the shear stresses uh, the normal stress is this, normal stress is this and the shear stress uh, we can find out substituting the values of uh, direction cosines in this equation and what we can find out that the tau is equals to this and in do simple maths we have 9 tau octahedral shear stress square is equals to 2 into i square or the first invariant square plus 6 into this is the second invariant. If you look at the equation in the previous class this is the second invariant i 2 or a 2 there it is given as a 2 and that simplifies to that tau octahedral is equals to root 2 by 3 root over i 1 square minus 3 i 2. So, that 2 is taken outside 9 is coming. So, it is there is no such problem and those 8 planes are drawn here to give you the understanding. In those octahedral planes uh, the normal and shear stresses are having some invariant value because it is a combination of invariant. So, that those values always remains constant on those planes normal and shear stresses and that makes an interesting observation sometimes for some material property determination we need to evaluate this. So, uh, for a better visualization uh, what is what we can do we can mark the access system here. So, if we mark the axis system here this is the first octahedral plane what we have already seen and the remaining are quite visible from there. So, with this uh, if in, in a state of stress the first invariant is equals to 0 that means the octahedral normal stress is equals to 0 and only the shear stresses will act normal stress on the octahedral plane equals 0. Uh, it may happen that in some cases the first invariant if it is 0 there only the shear stresses will act. Uh, some example uh, I have drawn uh, a typical case in two dimension uh, I have drawn for pure shear. So, uh, there was no normal stress acting. So, that type of pure shear may act this is an uh, important from the point of view of strength and failure of some material. So, that pure shear sometimes uh, govern the material property and that is the reason we need to find out this and we need to um, check whether the pure shear condition in three dimensional stress concept is with uh, sustained by the material or not and or how much it can sustain. So, with that same note uh, we have come to the end of uh, the lecture today. Uh, the books uh, remain same that is why it has been written there. All the text whatever I have uh, covered so far or may be covering in future slides 
all are taken from some books either this book or that book. So, I would suggest if you do not find and it is difficult to pinpoint what is taken from what which book it, it is sometimes a mix of, of different books that is the reason I would suggest you follow those books if required and uh, with that I thank you for attending today's lecture and we will meet again with our next lecture soon. Thank you.